Today on Pro's Park Guys, I'm gonna take you on a complete walking tour of Knott's Berry Farm. What? Okay, so I did a video about Ghost Rider Secrets Revealed, and at the end of the video, I said type in some type of way of berry, the different spellings of berry. If you want more Knott's Berry Farm videos, whew, you guys like Knott's Berry Farm. So I'm gonna take you guys on a tour. For those of you who are not familiar with Knott's Berry Farm, it is amazing. I'm gonna take you show you everything you can do here at Knott's Berry Farm because this is such a fun place to be. Let's check it out. Hey everybody, Chris Pros here from Pros Park Pass. And guess what? We are partnering up with Jen from Getaway Today and Chantel from her Instagram account, Disneyland Tour Guide. And guess what we're doing? We're giving away a $1,000 dream vacation. Getaway Today gifts to get for a thousand. Are we ready? Let's do this. A thousand dollar dream vacation? <laughs> what a dream. This is how you become eligible. One, subscribe to Pro Spark Best on YouTube. Number two, you have to follow at Getaway Today on Instagram. And number three, follow me on Instagram at Disneyland Tour Guide. That's it. It's all super easy to do. If you do that, you are now eligible. But if you watch my videos and look for their posts, we're going to teach you other ways to get additional entries for this vacation. We're choosing a winner February 14th. That's Valentine's Day. We're sharing the love. As you first enter in, you're gonna see the, the Knott's Berry Farm, like little windmill right there. And you can either go left, which takes you to Ghost Town, or you go right to Camp Snoopy. I wanna end at Camp Snoopy, so we're gonna go left first. And just so you guys know, Knott's Berry Farm, when it first opened a long time ago, it started as a berry farm. They sold berry pies right there, right there, that area right there. That's where the original Knott's Berry Farm pie stand was, was right there, the berry farm. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. We're now gonna go left. First area or land that we're gonna go to is called Ghost Town. It says, Welcome to Ghost Town, 1885. Now, Walter Knott, he loves trains, he loves ghost towns, and he actually worked in Calico, mining town. We did a whole video about Calico. You wanna see that over here, 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 somewhere, probably right there. You watch that video. It talks about the history of Calico. Walter Knott ended up purchasing Calico and he brought a lot of that stuff over here to help make this particular area like a ghost town. It is really cool. It's the original land here. They have all kinds of fun little things we do. That's, they got souvenirs, they have a geo shop. I remember when I was little, we did that and they have those rocks there. You see these rocks? You choose whichever one you want and then they will go in and they crack it in that machine right there. And then inside it, you find these really cool geodes. They're really cool and that's what they look like. So, I mean, I had, I had like this little tiny geode rock when I was little and I kept it on my desk <laughs> as a kid forever. I lost it, I don't know where it is now. Anyways, continuing on into Ghost Town. We're gonna go left down this way here. This is the entrance to Ghost Rider, the roller coaster. Probably my favorite roller coaster of all time. Seriously, an amazing roller coaster. I'm just gonna kinda walk down just so you guys can see it. That is so fun. If you don't watch that video, do watch that video because it's like you're riding it. You're like, I don't know if I'm going to survive. It's really fun. I love this. Do you know, I'm just walking down here. This is where the Ghost Rider is. Now, you might be asking yourself, okay, if you, those of you who don't know a lot about Knott's Berry Farm, let me tell you a few things so you guys can come prepared. You do not have to have reservations. Like Disneyland, where you have to have a reservation come in, you can just come right at the gate, buy a ticket. Or if you have a season pass, you can just come anytime you want, any day you want. No worry about reservations. So you want to come down to Knott's Berry Farm? Come on down, make a day of it. It is fun. They got great food too. I'm gonna show you some food a little bit later on. There's, there's Ghost Rider, guys. The theming here is really fun. You see all these stores, where the lockers are. They have a bakery, and this is a soup station. They have a lot, we can sit down and do a lot of eating. Now I'm gonna go back this way and continue on through the ghost town. Also, one of the fun things you can do is right there, you can go panning for gold. I'm serious. They give you a little pan, they got like a little sluice of water going through. You pan for gold and you can get some gold nuggets. Pan for gold, pan for gold. It's fun. I took my son Miles, we've done this before. They have this even at Calico where you pan for gold. It, it's, a, it's a fun activity to do. You put the little pan in there, you swish it around, sh -sh -sh -sh, you try to find some gold nuggets. This is the panning for gold station. It has been a staple from Knott's Berry Farm from 1947 and and, ready for some cool facts? This is the original location where it was when it first opened up. Here, pan for gold, pan for gold. You guys, we're gonna show you a little demonstration on how to pan for gold. He's got the dirt in it, and he's, you're slowly going in a circle trying to get the dirt to come out. You want the heavier elements will go sink to the bottom. 
So the dirt being lighter gets washed out, but the, the heavier stuff sinks right to the bottom. Now gold is 10 times heavier than sand, and it's 20 times heavier than the water. This is a fun activity. You bring your kids here. I mean, even, let's be honest, adults like to do it too. <laughs> I do it. I love it. But you, your kids going to have a lot of fun with this. Now, when kids do it, they, a lot of times they go really fast because they just want to get done. Tell them just take their time. See this? They're just going, taking their time, panning for gold. Now, I do know this about panning. See, the, see these rings? That makes a huge difference. That's really, that makes your pan way more effective. Oh, I, I see a glint. Oh my gosh. You see it? <laughs> Get the last little bit of that sand Look down. at that, yes. You see that right there, guys? That is actual 22 karat gold from Alaska. Are you serious? Yes. It's actual 22 karat gold from Alaska. Not, so you think of everything. Okay, I'm still here at, at the Panty for Gold shop, but I want you to kind of show some old history here. This is now the entrance for uh, Ghost Rider. See these rocks here. But if you look over here, you can see this old cabin. See the old cabin there? And then see those rocks above that? Those rocks and that, the higher rocks and that cabin, that is originally here from like the 1940s when they were, had the panning for gold area here. This new rock is a facade they built when they did Ghost Ride in the 90s to make it kind of tie in. But that was the original rock. And see that little like window there? They would have like a water sluice come down for the panning for gold. Woo! Right there, check it out. Original shack and rocks. Just so you guys know, back in the old days, the panning for gold pit, that was outside Knott's Berry Farm. That was just, anybody could walk up and do that anytime they wanted to. Just something fun for people to do. All right, continuing on at the tour. Here we go, walking down here. This is, and see like, right there. Oh, look, 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 look. <laughs> the rocking chairs are rocking with nobody in them. Because we're in a ghost town, guys. We're in a ghost town. And sometimes they'll have performers come up there and they yell and do little shows and everything like this. This is a lot of fun. We'll walk down here. They have all kinds of fun things. Here lies Deadwood Dick. Well, the honoriest critter in three counties. He told the sheriff they'd never take him alive. They didn't. This is him. The sheriff is covered him up, boys. Little flowers there. And they have like little benches like this where people can get photos. Those are really fun. A lot of people, they have women and cowboys and people love to get their photos. Lots of fun things like this. Silver Dollar Saloon. Come here and shoot some guns. Miles loves that. This is a grill. And then this is a blacksmith, guys. A general blacksmith. And a lot of times I'll have a blacksmith in there and they will be working on different things like making a horseshoe. And they really, they're, I mean, they're real. Oh, there's the blacksmith right there. They, like, they're literally like, hammering and making horseshoes. He's cranking that crank, which gets more air in there. You know, fire needs what? Oxygen. So there it is. It's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. So that way he can go ahead and do his blacksmithing. Why do you make these little horseshoes? Well, because a long time ago, one of the ponies over on the stagecoach came down with this awful sore throat. So I had to take that pony all the way over to the veterinarian. Yeah. And it turns out my pony uh, was a little horse. <laughs> yeah, he had bronchitis. <laughs> and if I didn't get him help right away, I would have had to have taken him all the way to the hospital. Oh my gosh. I bet you guys are probably good friends. You're probably neighbors. We do, yeah, yeah. He went to the saloon with me last night. He went right up to the bar. Bartender looked at me and said, Hey, horse said, Yes, sir, I'll have two of those. <laughs> now, if you look over here, you can see this, it says ice saw. Did you hear about the uh, blind man who picked up the hammer and saw? Oh. <laughs> hammer and saw, come on, ice saw. Let's try. Oh, there we go. This is cool. I love this stuff. That is real metal. He's like bending it and shaping it. That'll become the toe of our horseshoe. Now we gotta put heels on it in case this pony wants to go dancing later. <laughs> they literally, that's um, for real. They're heating up that metal there. The metal gets super hot. And they use over here the anvil and they shape it. Kids come here and check it out. It's a lot of fun. Over here, they got like a, some good restaurants. These are like little shops that you can go into and check it out. We're still down here in the ghost town. Now I have to show you something that most people just walk right by. See this little sign there, it says town jail. And there's like a little like alleyway to go down there. Sad Eye Joe right there, Sad Eye Joe the horse thief is in jail and you can talk to Sad Eye Joe. Most people just walk right on by, but we gotta go talk to Sad Eye Joe. We came here one time and Sad Eye Joe, he actually knew who Miles was. He's like, hi Miles. And Miles' eyes about popped right out of his head. He couldn't even handle it. So this is Sad Eye Joe. Let's see if he's snoring. Oh, he's snoring. Oh no, that might mean he's asleep. We'll have to come back when Sad Eye Joe is not asleep.
continue on through here. But this is Amanda's favorite thing to get here at Knott's Berry Farm. It is the fried corn. They got tacos here. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna call this guys. They they have some of the best food that you'll ever have. So right here, this is so good. There's the corn. I'm gonna come a little closer just to show you. It is Amanda's single favorite thing that she gets. Look at it, it looks so good. The smell is just like, oh, it smells so good. This is another general store here. You go in there and they have, Miles likes it because they sell swords and guns and things like this. Now over here is the Birdcage Theater. This is where they used to have shows. I don't know if they're still, I don't think they're still doing shows right now. Because you know, the world has changed. But you used to be able to go in here and go into different types of shows. Yeah, but it looks like it's all closed down. We're still in Ghost Town. I'm gonna go left and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna go right because I wanna show you down this way over here. This is the old schoolhouse. Let's check it out. This is a real schoolhouse. It was built by Iowa farmers and this is how it was. It's a one room schoolhouse. We got, a, we got our teacher in here. This is like another replica. This is our original schoolhouse. And you're the teacher. This is the Iowa school and it was built in Kansas. Yes, so there were Iowa farmers and they homesteaded in Beloit, Kansas. Okay. So it's not in Kansas anymore, it's here at Knott's Ferry Farm, right. where it's been since 1952. And most everything in here is original, including me. <laughs> well, they do call it ghost town, right? Well, there it is. <laughs> yes, they do. This is a list of teachers that taught in here and what they made per month. Oh my gosh, Janine Macy, she made 40. Right? They must have really, yeah, they must have liked her. She's right here too, that's her picture. Oh, that's her? That was in 1901, uh -huh. $40 a month. Right? Wow. These oh. are the Cowman brothers, Edward and William Cowman. Okay. They taught them here in 1895 and 1896. Uh-oh, she gave up. Yes. Anna Smith, she's like, I can't do this. That's what it sounds like, right? But yeah. women in this time were not allowed to be married and teach school at the same time. Oh, you could be married and teach school. No, you had to pick one or the other. Single ladies only could teach school. This is for real. I mean, she's not making this, not a joke. So if you were a guy and you wanted to like, when they say court, they mean like date a woman. Yes. You would, you could only do it one night a week unless you went to church. And then they... you do it too. Yep, <laughs> that's how it used to be. Now look at these desks. We have to look at these desks. These three desks, they're, you see they're a little bit wider. They're for two people. See that, they have two people. These are from the 1800s. They are the oldest desks in the school. Look at these little desks. We used this classroom in the 50s, so they got laid out, you know, a little differently. Yes. But if this were the time, 1879, the bigger desk would be in the back. Back. And the littler ones in the front, because the bigger students would have to help me with the littler what? students. Because we would teach first through eighth grade. And then this here is an inkwell. See this right here, this little hole? This is where they would put a little bottle of ink, and they would dip their little quill in for writing. It's an inkwell. Yeah. And the naughty boys. If the girls were sitting in front of them, the girls would have their hair like a braid. And the boys would take that very carefully, take the girls braiding hair and dip it in the inkwell. Shame, shame. So if they, if they got in trouble, they had to wear this hat? Mm -hmm. Dunce was spelled D-U-N-S after a Scotsman. And he believed that if you wore a pointy hat on your head that all the knowledge of the universe would go in your brain. That's why you see wizards wearing pointy hats. Are you kidding me? I didn't no. know that! No. Oh my gosh! Uh, eventually, you know, when words cross the pond, sometimes they're spelling it. Yeah. And then it evolved into being the dunce cap, into being what silly a dunce and dunce. What dunce hat. Oh my gosh. they're like, the knowledge of the universe doesn't go in your brain that way. <laughs> this is really cool. These are called McGuffey readers right here. This is, these are first editions. These are original McGuffey readers. These are like what they, they had for different grades to teach the kids how to read and all that. The teachers yeah. would work with them. This, I mean, this is them. For me, it would be like Dick and Jane, and then for them, they had the McGuffey Readers. And, McGuffey well, Readers were like the standards in Standards, I love it. Another cool thing about Not Safe, I mean, you can see there's the characters, they just walk around, right? Howdy. So we'll walk back here. This is the dance hall. By the way, see that says Cordelia's Pie Kitchen? That's because Walter's Not's wife's name was Cordelia, and she made pie, and they have a, a little homage to her, the, the pie kitchen. You guys, it's early in the morning, but I'm I'm so hungry because I could, I could smell it's amazing food. This is a really fun thing. It's like this wilderness lodge. You go in there and they have a kind of like this shaman show. It's fun. Now, right over here, they have the Calico River Rapids. This is like the Grizzly River Run in Disneyland. But, but, this one here, you get soaked. Like, I mean, you, there's no way to get through this without getting just drenched. You have to be aware of that. Coming down here, we got our uh, wilderness broiler where we can get some food. 
And then, of course, they've got this is the Stagecoach Express. This is a really kind of a unique roller coaster. Is you're riding on horses. What? Yeah, horses, side by side. Kind of like how they do the Tron ride, where you sit on top of the car, and then they have like a back plate that comes on your back and pushes in. There go the horses. Yeah, you see the back plate pressing on their back to keep them in their saddles. Whenever I ride like that, I always like hunch over and like try to get like all aerodynamic and like I'm like, I pretend like I'm really riding the horse. There they go. Here they come. I'm gonna take you right past Cordelia's Pie Kitchen to show you something kind of fun that a lot of people just kind of walk right past and don't ever really, don't even really care about, but it's fun. It's the Boot Hill Cemetery. Now the Boot Hill Cemetery has a bunch of different graves. Some of our puns have some funny things written down them, but they have some really cool effects. So this Boot Hill Cemetery, you guys can get a photo right there standing in that, uh, that pine box, I guess, right there. But right here, this one here, it says Hiram McTavish. A legend's heartbeat will always be again. You can step on that grave, and when you do, right there, I'm stepping on it, I can feel it. Oh, any chance to drop my shoes, right? But I literally, you can feel it and hear it, the heartbeat. I have to show you something also. There's an old cowboy movie called Tombstone, which is a great movie, and they show this. This is, is it, here lies Lester Moore, four slugs from a 44, no less, no more. That was a real, that's a real epitaph they had on uh, the tombstone for Lester Moore. And if you watch the movie Tombstone, at the very beginning of that movie, they show that tombstone with that inscription on it. And here they have like a replica of it here at Knott's Berry Farm. Here we go down here into Calico. You can see that there's the steam train right there coming on in. The train goes around and they, while you're on the train, it's fun to have a little show while you're riding the train where like some robbers will get on and have you hold your hands up and they're gonna rob you. It's, it's just really cool. Walt Disney actually came and sat on that train. Right over here, got the, some more candy stores and ice cream. A lot of good food. Now I have to show you one of my favorite places, the Calico Saloon. There comes a the train coming in. Look at it. It's really a pretty train. Right behind me is the Calico Saloon. And this is where they do a little fun shows. There's Knott's Calico Saloon. Let's go in, guys. They sometimes they have like shows, like the person would stand there, or they do a little comedy routine. And you used to be able to sit right up there and over here and kind of listen to what they're saying. It's a lot of fun. They have special like, cocktails here, but really what you want to try is they have the boysenberry cream soda. That's what you want to get. There they are, they're making my boysenberry drink. It's like a boysenberry cream soda. It is one of the best drinks. I love it so much. Calico soda. Calico soda, baby. There's no alcohol in the cal Calico soda. They do have a boysenberry so beer, though. So if you want to get alcohol, you get Calico Triple X. But kids also kind of like to see them like pouring and making those special drinks for them. They're like, this looks cool. And look at, I mean, look at this. It tastes so good. And you get to keep this. This it's a plastic mason jar. It's not real glass, but you get to keep it. It's not, it this is my favorite drink. My wife Amanda comes here. We come here on our anniversary a lot, and she will get this and popcorn. You know, Amanda, and her popcorn. I'm gonna show you this, this is the stage area. This is where they do shows. You guys ask me to show you shows like that every hour, so I can't remember the exact time, but they'll interact. You just, like, I'm right here just standing at the bar. They come out there, they interact with you, they have fun with you, you get a drink, you can watch a show. It's really fun and cool. It's so refreshing. Guess what, guys? I couldn't resist. The man is be so ticked. Mm. Fresh popcorn and calico soda. Do you guys ever have trouble eating popcorn? Like, the man is so good at it. She's always eats like, she's always so dainty. I just want to like, like literally just bury my face in it. Okay, we just left the calico and saloon. We're gonna go outside here and continue on with our tour. This is, where, this is where the train was. But right over here, this is the Calico Mine Train. It is very historic to uh, Knott's Bay Farm, almost synonymous. 
When you think of Knott's Ray Farm, there are really two rides you think of is Calico and the Log Flume. The Calico Mine Train heavily influenced Walt Disney because see the line goes back through there. Well, Walt Disney came here one time and was walking around. He's like, oh my gosh. He's like, you hit the line, you hit the line. The line goes way back there. And that really inspired him for Disneyland. And it's kind of a little fun mine tree. You ride it and take you on and go through a whole bunch of like mining expeditions. On stage here, so we have like Charlie Brown, Woodstock, and the characters from Peanuts. Now, we are now leaving the ghost town and walking into the Roaring Twenties Boardwalk. Look at that ride. It's going straight up, getting ready to drop them off. So again, this is actually, it's not the, it used to be the Roaring Trains, it's now called Boardwalk. This is the, the area where you now is the South Boardwalk. So we're gonna walk over here, look at that, they're getting ready to go down. I'll show you as we get closer, see it again. But this is a really fun area, particularly for little kids. They have the Berry Tells here, Return to the Fair. This is an original, this is a great ride for kids. It's a shooter ride where you get in and sit in the car and you shoot little boysenberries at, at foxes and try not to let them steal the boysenberry pies. And there's, it's, it's got all kinds of great smelling food. It's really cool. Down here they got some more gift shops and then a candy shop right around here. But if you look over here, this is one of Miles, he loves this. It's called the Wheeler Dealer. This is where you can ride, it's like bumper cars. And then across they have the Walter Knott Theater right above that. And this is where they have fun, entertaining shows, usually with the peanut characters. And the way you get to that theater is you have to walk right around the Wheeler Dealer. You walk up the ramp and go right over there and walk right on up to get to the theater. By the way, the shows here are phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Okay, we go back over here, right by Knott's Berry Tells. It's the Berry Factory. We're gonna move right down here. Now we're gonna move into the boardwalk area, the main boardwalk area. This is where we start to get into these really cool thrill rides. You can see them all coming around here. This is a little bit of adrenal injections. So they're fun. They do have some kids right down here, they, they, they go on. This is really more for thrill seekers. I'll show you each one. All right, so we're gonna go right over here. This is kind of like the egg scrambler. I don't know what they call it, but when it's a kid, like a fair like that, and they call it the egg scrambler. So that's what they call it. I don't know what the ride is. What, let's see what they call it here. They call it the scrambler, the Pacific scrambler. That's what they call it. <laughs> they don't call it the egg scrambler, it's Pacific scrambler. And then right over here, they've got the gliders, where you can also kind of like fly, you use a giant fin, you use your hand, with that giant fin to make the plane kind of go up and down. If you do it just right, you can get it, you can get it like swooping, like and Sometimes you get it, so uh, the cables go kunk. It's kind of scary. All right, look at that. It's going up. Oh, there it goes, guys. And it stops up there. That's the worst part. It's like stop, you're like what, and then all of a sudden, then it starts going. This right here is called hang time. Lots of loops and inversions. See, there they go. Very fun. Very smooth, though. It's a very smooth ride, even though it's got so many loops. Continuing on, you're gonna see right over here, we've got, well, straight ahead, we've got an accelerator. I'll talk about that when we get there. One of my favorite roller coasters, probably my second favorite roller coaster here at Nuts Berry Farm. It is so good. And then this one over here, this is a little fun one here. Uh, they have this uh, almost identical ride at like Legoland. If you guys have been to Legoland, you can ride it. They have the little racers there. And this here is called the Coast Rider. Because you know how they have the Ghost Rider in the Ghost Town? Well here, we're on the boardwalk, they call this Coast Rider. It's like a little four person, like kind of like almost like a wild mouse, but you're gonna fall off the edge and you know, fun stuff like that. Over here, we've got the accelerator. This ride is intense. They just did brand new, they just repainted it. It looks really good. It takes off, I think you get up to 80 miles per hour in almost two seconds, and you go right up over the top of that. Something that's kind of freaky about this accelerator is sometimes when you watch that, that, that hoop or what is that that almost like a horseshoe top thing it'll sway in the wind it'll move back and forth and I've heard people like they're like it's not steady you know if it was perfectly steady that'd be really dangerous because then there's no give it's got to have the give of the car going over so it does wobble sometimes when you look at it and that's always like a little freaky thing so if you want to do something kind of fun take your friend on it who's never been on it before and then while you're waiting in line as it goes it starts wobbling like oh my gosh it's wobbling that's gonna break 
they will freak out. Also over here in Boardwalk, of course, like, you know, in Boardwalk, they have the Barkers, they have games, all different types of games of chance that you can play and try to win stuffed animals or shirts or whatever you want to try to win. All different kinds right over here. Now straight ahead right there, that is the log flume. There's a little walkway right there. And that walkway reconnects you back into uh, Ghost Town. Leaving, so you leave Boardwalk, you go back into Ghost Town if you want to go that way. And that is the log flume. This is probably just the most iconic attraction of Knott's Berry Farm. Everybody knows it, everybody loves it. It's really cool. And, and it's got a lot, you'll go through and there's like mining and, and you see like the, the, two, the people that are like logging and working, it's fun. During Not Scary Farm, they retheme it and make it really scary. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna continue on here. This is the Supreme Screen. This is where they take you all the way up and they have the rides drop and it, you are way up there. This is one of the rides, still a few rides that I get like a thrill, like my stomach. I think I've ridden so many rides that a lot of times you have like desensitized to it. This one though, whoa, it's like shh. It's a good one. We're now gonna be leaving Boardwalk and going into Fiesta Village. This is like the tween kids, I would say. Not quite, not quite teenagers and not little kids. But lots of little fun rides here. It is, it's a, some really good food here as well. So they have a bunch of shops down here. And I'm gonna actually go through here just real quickly just to show you. This is where they have a bunch of good food. Like the food here, that's I think the really underappreciated here at Knott's Berry Farm how good their food is. I must be really hungry because I need to keep talking about food all day long. This is where they got the three tacos, quesadillas. It's just delicious. Over here, you got like the merry-go-round. And then over here, I can't remember the name of this ride. One of those ones that kind of like whips you around and spins and spins and spins. One thing that's really nice about Nazi Farm is if you get to an attraction and you're not sure if you want to ride it, you can see that they have, they tell you how exciting an attraction is on the sign. This is like a thrill ride for sure. But if you look here, it tells you five is the highest, one is the lowest. So if it's a five, that means it's very aggressive. It's a double black diamond. It is the, it's one of the most aggressive rides. Now let's go over here and take a look at like what they have for their merry-go-round. It should probably be a one. Let's take a look at the sign. Let's see what the sign says here. Low thrill ride. That right over there is a Jaguar. Uh, roller coaster. I'm gonna take you back into Fiesta Village and show you the other things they have here. And that will then take us into Camp Snoopy. The swings. So here they got the hat dance. It's kind of like, you know, like a, sort of like a teacups right over there. I don't remember the names of these rides. This is like kind of like, it hangs upside down, like goes back and forth like a TikTok and and you get on it, it spins in a circle. Do you guys like those rides, like the, the swing ship or the flying Dutchman, whatever they call it, the one I, Always have loved those rides, those swing ship rides. And now it starts to swing. Oh, look how high it's gotten. It's slowing down. Hey, we're coming over here. This is the Montezuma's Revenge. It's going to be closed. It's going to be refurbished. It's going to be closed for a while. It's only open for a little longer and. It is one of the best rides. It's a flywheel that shoots you down super fast and you go through a loop right down there. Since they're gonna close it, I better go ride it. I remember riding this ride when I was in fifth grade, the summer between fourth and fifth grade, riding Montezuma's Revenge. And I went back and told all my friends at school, I'm like, I love the most amazing ride I've ever been on. It scared the heck out of me. I remember when I got on it, I was like sick. I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do it. That's the best part. That's what a whole thrill ride's are like. It's just that experience of getting like, Ugh! and then you survive it. You accelerate, you go through that loop, and then you go kind of up where gravity catches you and brings you right back. ride of Montezuma's Revenge. As you leave Fiesta Village, you're gonna go into Camp Snoopy. This is the children's area, and it has Miles' very favorite ride. 
it's a mix of sex. I don't think it's his favorite right much longer. It's called the Huff and Puff. It's so fun. Though. It's a good little area for children. You got a little ride there that kids get on. It's like little semi trucks. And then over here, you got a Ferris wheel. They want to try something just a little bit braver. And then down there, they got like the seesaw slide. And over here, they got the kite eating tree. Kite eating tree is kind of interesting because you notice that if you look at the top where the, the leaves are, they change. It starts smiling and then you see it eating the kite. Do some face painting here. Portraits, caricatures, silhouettes. And then this is Miles' favorite, the Huff and Puff. He will ride this over and over and over and over and over again. It's a little push and pull, make it go all by itself, this little track. It's really cute and really fun. Here's Linus's flying blanket. It's interesting because you have to lay down on this ride. You gotta see, lay down on it. As you come over here, you see there's a, they have a little train. This is really fun. And this is like a little Camp Soupy train. As you go on it, you have Linus narrates the train. You have little things for you to look at. Like you see that Snoopy, he caught the fish. Charlie Brown, what does he catch? He caught a rock. Poor Charlie Brown. For all the Charlie Browns in the world, you're the Charlie Browniest. Continuing on here, this is now the area here with Camp Soupy is where you come in and do the, oh, by the way, tucked right back there, they the balloon race. Get on the balloon and go around in circles. And then this here is where they have the railroad. This is the Grand Sierra Railroad. This little train takes you around Snoopy's area. Let's, let's do it. I got on the train. I am all the way in the very back, facing backwards. Because, you know, why not? I know. I'm crazy. Hello, everyone. Riding what? back seats backwards what? on the Camp Snoopy Railroad. Never. Real seeker. Of all the Charlie Browns in the world, he's the Charlie Brownie. Who's your favorite Peanuts character? Mine is Snoopy, no doubt. I love Snoopy. Amanda loves Franklin. Miles loves Woodstock and Lucy. There's Franklin. Amanda loves Franklin because he's so kind. Spike at the tumbleweed race. That's the silver bullet right above us. High thrill ride. Uh, it's a hanging roller coaster and lots of turns and loops. Ooh, it's intense. Miles, that's all time. He's tall enough to ride it. Like, not yet. Going across the bridge. Now you see Charlie Brown's tent. They're making s'mores. Snoopy people. Amanda and I really like this ride. Uh, Miles, is he sort of likes it. He'll do it, but it's not his favorite. I think it's so cute. All right, getting off, we see Snoopy the Red Baron. Or, you know, he does a flying. This is the meet and greet where the kids and fans of uh, the Peanuts characters can go to meet them. Lucy and Snoopy are there. The Sierra Sidewinder. This roller coaster over here. It's a swivel roller coaster that you get on it. It rotates around in circles. I'll show you as we get close to it. Here comes a Sidewinder, it's going up. It's four cars, they fit four people in each car and they're like circles and they rotate around in circles. Like, you see it right there, it'll start to rotate. There they go. Right behind me, they have a little stage there. It says swing in, the music, rock and roll, and bluegrass. They have like performers perform there. That's kind of fun. Now we're gonna exit out of Camp Snoopy and show you the silver bullet. There's a silver bullet right there. It is, it's a fun, fun ride. The feet dangle, get a lot of good uh, negative G's and positive G's in this ride. And here's that Camp Snoopy beginning. Miles loves this area, loves to play underneath the, the waterfall here, there's a little cave area for him. He likes that a lot. I'm gonna stick it right here so we can watch the silver bullet go right over us. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Knott's Berry Farm is amazing, it's fun. Uh, the thing about a Nazi farm makes it a little bit different than Disneyland, just to be prepared for this, is you don't need reservations. Come in anytime you want. Buy your ticket, walk right in. Not a problem. You really could probably do Knott's Berry Farm, all of it, in one day. You know, I don't know if you need to say multiple days. You do pretty much almost everything in one day you want to do. But be sure to check out their food. 
Now I'm gonna show you something also really cool about Knott's Berry Farm is they have uh, Mrs. Knott's Chicken, the restaurant. It's outside the park. You have to go outside, exit to the park in order to go to this restaurant. But it's not, it's not hard to do. I'll show you how easy it is to do. So here's the exit. We're gonna walk right through this exit. And right here they have some shops. They have Starbucks. Uh, I think they have some donut shops. That takes you right back into the entrance to Knott's Berry Farm. You can enter and exit as much as you want. Right here it says Virginia's Gift Shop. Now Virginia was Walter Knott's daughter. And when they had like a restaurant, they got so popular that people would line up forever to get the chicken. And so she put out this little card table and was sell wares and became like one of the first general stores. And so in honor of that, they have Virginia's Gift Shop. Walt Disney almost bought Knott's Berry Farm. They're, they're selling it. Uh, and they Disney had plans. They wanted to turn, I think it was called like yeah, Disney Americana or something along those lines. But the Knott family is very concerned about that because they're worried that if Disney bought it, they would just Disney-fy it and then they maybe lose the legacy of their dad, Walter Knott, who really put his heart and soul into this area. So they were very hesitant. So they ended up selling to a Cedar Fair company. And they own lots of uh, amusement parks. But Cedar Fair is like, hey, you can keep all the history and everything of Knott's, the Knott's family, all that. So that's why they ended up going that way. This is Virginia's gift shop and we're walking down here. And this is where they have probably some of the best chicken you'll ever have, guys. It's so good. It's Knott's Chicken Dinner Restaurant right here. And you usually you have to wait a while. It's not quite open yet because it's so early. This is Knott's Chicken Dinner Restaurant. Come right in here and grab your amazing chicken. They got crisp biscuits and gravy. All of it right here. And this is how it all got started. Knott's got started through chicken dinner, selling chicken. And this is Knott's basically, it was because of her that Knott's was so successful. So I think that's a perfect place to end. Thank you so much for supporting us and being uh, being uh, open to like, these new things. I, I think Knott's Berry Farm is amazing. If you haven't, come down, check it out. You guys see it, you got some great rides, you got great food. Come down and spend some time down here. You can really do it in a day, it's so nice. So if you're gonna be playing a family vacation, come on down. They actually have a hotel down here too, that you can stay at. It's fun, it's fun. All right, oh, you guys know Joey now. What do you guys gotta do? Oh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll keep doing more content. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. It means the world to me. I think you're awesome. Have a fantastic day. Bye.